Greyhound racing hit its final stretch in the Midwest this spring as Dubuque's Iowa Greyhound Park, the state's last remaining track, ended over 35 years of live races. A strong kickoff in the 1980s paved the way for a casino gambling boom, which took the financial lead. Everything we do from now on is pure profit. Less than 10 years ago, casinos, local business, and governments parlayed their influence into a deal with the Iowa legislature to phase out millions in state gaming subsidies, which had kept tracks afloat, even as dog racing declined nationwide. This year, the well ran dry. It's a great sport to bring your family and kids up and enjoy watching it, but it just financially, we just can't hold up anymore. General Manager Brian Carpenter began his career as a teenager leading out racers to the starting box. He's seen other tracks rise and fall and additional forms of gambling peel off market share. Florida kind of was the dagger in the heart. When Florida closed, there was a lot of tracks for people to be able to run down there. And when you bred, if it didn't run very well, one of the bigger tracks, you could go down to Florida and get your money back. Carpenter estimates the Dubuque closure will impact local veterinarians, dog food and other suppliers, and over 70 track and kennel workers. It's going to be hard for a lot of the employees. I have many of them that have been here as long as I've been, 37 some years. And it's something that you work and do it. It's part of your life. A surge in attendance during the park's waning days made for a bittersweet final run. Six O's at six one. All of us coming up here and weighing our dogs in. I mean, you know, we, we put on a good game face, but believe me, it's to, to look at the dogs because the dogs do love this. Now retired trainer Vera Raznick says public misconceptions about how dogs are treated have hounded the industry. I don't think there was enough done to really educate on what greyhound racing really is. And you know, you a lot of it you just hear bad. Raznick says Iowa Greyhound Park's eight kennels are easy to regulate, and she designed conditioning around intensity of schedule and each animal's individuality. But animal rights groups like Grey 2K say Greyhound racetrack conditions are inhumane, and that dogs are subject to a host of potential athletic and career-ending injuries, poor diet, and drugs. The Iowa Racing and Gaming Commission's 2021 annual report revealed of nearly 1,700 greyhounds tested, eight were positive, mostly for muscle relaxants. By next year, West Virginia will house the only two remaining dog tracks in the country. And while congressional action to ban greyhound racing has stalled, a majority of states have already made it illegal. This is a day that we all knew was coming. Iowa hasn't taken that step, and in fact, just passed House File 2497, which could expand simulcast betting options to more tracks outside the U.S. The Humane Society had requested a veto, but the bill was signed into law mid-June. Particularly of our concern is in Vietnam and, and in Tijuana, Mexico, some tracks that have some long history of, of animal welfare concerns. Uh, but this bill that was passed uh, is worded in a way that the commission shall grant simulcasting licenses. Dubuque ran an abbreviated final season, in part due to a shortage of new dogs as national interest subsides. But breeders like Gary Reichert's are soldiering on and rebuke activists for taking credit for racing's downfall, saying a proliferation of convenient sports gambling options is the biggest culprit. Every once in a while, there's, you know, in any occupation, there's a person that just doesn't do what they should be doing, and that's the ones they dwell on. And then they lump us all together. They have so much money that people are donating to those groups, and none of us going to the Greyhounds, nothing. Records turns out about 50 racers per year and says his pups are raised in sanitary conditions, given ample space, freedom to move about, a solid diet, and plenty of love. For him, it's paid dividends. They're supposed to be the best dogs in the United States to come there to race, and, and uh, we want it. They run all day long. They just love to run. Why would I want to abuse my dog when I'm trying to make money off a dog? We love our dogs, and our dogs are almost like our kids and stuff, you know, and Come here, kid. these are like family. Drawing the ire of the greyhound trade in the U.S. is the notion that once canines stop racing, they're euthanized. While extreme trauma or debilitation could lead to such outcomes, Reichert's champions wildly successful adoption programs that find good homes for former racers. We fell in love with Lucy when we met her the first time. She showed up for a home visit and 
we were in the kitchen and she came around the corner and she had one of my slippers in her mouth. So she said this was hers and that we were gonna be her family. So, yeah. Critics argue greyhound racing creates a population that needs to be rescued. But many who've adopted them and gone on to foster more find the dog's demeanor fits right into domestic life. Lucy? They're so gentle. I have had so many of our members come out, want to foster, you know, help transport, and that was a really good feeling, particularly since the Dubuque track was ending. Jody Phelps is president of Iowa-based Heartland Greyhound Adoption, one of many such groups in over 40 states and Canada endorsed by the National Greyhound Association. Dogs come to Phelps aged 18 months to five years old. She works with vets to determine any necessary rehab and tailors a suite of options to mesh with new homes. They're just great pets to have. We'll still work with the breeders in Iowa that are running in other tracks. Phelps dismisses euthanization rumors, adding her organization has relocated nearly 4,000 greyhounds, though numbers are dwindling. We'll be here until the last dog is ready to retire. For Market to Market, I'm Josh Bittner.